assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel i am dr maryam hussain and i make videos related to dentistry and medicine so today's video is about chronic hypoplastic pulpitis and in simple words it is also known as pulp polyp and the name of this condition pretty much explains what this condition is about so let's go one by one the first word that i see is chronic this basically refers to the type of inflammation that occurs in this condition so it is a chronic inflammatory condition second word that i see is hyperplastic now i hope that you guys know what is the difference between hyperplasia and hypertrophy so in hyperplasia there is going to be increase in the number of cells for example in normal tissue there are two cells so after the hyperplastic change there are going to be more than two cells okay and in the case of hypertrophy there is going to be increase in the size of cells for example i have got two cells over here of this size and after the hypertrophic change there are going to be two cells of the larger size note that the number of cells is same in the hypertrophic change but in both of these conditions there is going to be increase in the size of the tissue overall so as a result of the hyperplastic change in this condition there is going to be a formation of an abnormal growth uh, and a mass that is uh, basically finger shaped finger like nodule or it is just a nodular mass that is the reason this is known as a polyp the third word that i see over here is pulpitis pulpitis basically refers to an inflammatory condition that is involving the pulp tissue so now let's talk about the prevalence of this condition this condition is more prevalent in children and young adults secondly the tooth that are more that is most commonly involved is molar and it can be both the deciduous and the permanent molars and also most commonly the, uh, the um, condition uh, involves the teeth that have large exposed pulp tissue and missing dentinal roof for example if i've got a cavitated molar and in this molar i've got the pulp chamber that is exposed and there is no dentinal roof present on the pulp chamber so then only it is possible for this pulp tissue to expand and to spread into this dentinal defect after the hyperplastic change and contrary to that if there is a tooth for example this with a dentinal wall intact between the pulp chamber over here there is a dentinal roof that is present so in this condition the pulp tissue cannot grow into the crown and then it cannot be called as a chronic hyperplastic pulpitis condition so for a chronic hyperplastic pulpitis to occur there needs to be a tooth that has a large cavitated uh, lesion present and no dentinal roof over the pulp chamber so now let's talk about the mechanism by which this condition occurs first of all there is mechanical irritation and the bacterial invasion that leads to this condition there is an open cavitated molar with an exposed pulp present in the uh, oral cavity so there is going to be a lot of bacterial invasion into that area and also uh, there is going to be mechanical irritation due to maybe due to food impaction in that area or maybe uh, the patient uh, you know irritating uh, the pulp uh, polyp with the help of uh, uh um, you know uh, toothpicks or any other thing so basically it causes irritation to the patient and the, and then the patient uh, keeps on irritating that area so as a result of that it is going to result in chronic inflammation and this chronic inflammation results in the hyperplastic granulation tissue that basically extrudes the pulp chamber and it extends into the dentinal defect now uh when there is going to be when there is going to be increase in the size of pulp tissue and for example this tooth has an open apex and there is a dentinal defect and the pulp chamber is exposed 
and this pulp tissue grows into the dentinal defect over here as a result of a hyperplastic change so this pulp tissue increases in size and as a result of increase in the size there is going to be a pressure on the apex and as a result of that pressure there can be venous compression as we all know that the veins and arteries do enter the tooth uh, from the uh, epicels so if the apex is open then the veins do not get compressed as a result of the pressure that is produced on the apex but if in this condition the apex is closed and the molar is of an adult patient so there there is the chances of venous compression and the blood supply cuts off to the tooth and that results in the necrosis of the tooth okay now let's talk about the appearance and the symptoms of this condition this basically appears as a dusky red or a pinkish soft nodule which is extruding or protruding into the oral ca uh, in, sorry into the dentinal cavity and it is basically uh, usually it is a painless condition and it is asymptomatic but there can be a slight feeling of pressure when the patient chews or bites on his teeth and then uh, it may be tender and also it bleeds very easily because uh, there is a lot of inflammation going on in this uh, uh, pulp tissue so it is very easy for it to bleed so this is a clinical picture of pulp polyp as we can see that it is a completely cavitated and carious molar and there is a pulp tissue that is projecting into the dentinal defect So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'll share the link with you guys in the description box below. Bye.